Nine is in startup. Falcon 9's in startup. There it is. Computers have taken over the Falcon 9. We're pressurizing first and second stage tanks for launch. Waiting for final go. The mission director, stage go two, for launch. For flight. Mission director has given me go for flight. Everything continues to look good. Pressurizing the tanks one final time here to get ready for liftoff. But right now at T minus 30 seconds and counting, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with GPS-3, space vehicle number four. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon. Go GPS. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Thirty seconds into flight, propulsion says the Merlin 1B engines are nominal. We're on trajectory and preparing to throttle down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And we're heading into the throttle bucket as we power down the Merlin engines. And throttling back up now. And when the engine's back up at full power, supersonic. and we have gone past Mach 1. Waiting now for Max Q call out. The vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer reports we're passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure called Max Q. From here on, as the speed picks up, the atmospheric density decreases and the loads are reduced on the Falcon 9 vehicle. Propulsion power continues to look good. The trajectory looks good. MVAC engine chill is started. The engine chill in call out on the MVAC second stage engine indicates we've begun chilling that turbo pump like we did with the first stage engines, getting ready for ignition of the upper stage engine. Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, the usual three sequence event That'll happen in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines. You can see glowing there in the night sky. Stage separation, and then we'll get startup of the second stage engine. Nice view from the ground camera looking up at the nine Merlin 1D engines on the business end of the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage separation confirmed. And the uh, startup. So we've had a good separation. MVAC up on power. On the left screen, the first stage continuing to coast down range as it begins to deploy those large titanium grid fins. Trajectory continues to look right down the middle. Both stages are following nominal trajectories. Guidance confirms we're on nominal trajectory with both stages. Acquisition of signal, Maryland. Maryland reports they've got signal from the second stage. Next event coming up is payload fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. A nice view from the camera looking forward. The GPS-3 satellite with the two payload fairing halves separating. Everything continuing to go well on this mission. Three minutes and 42 seconds into flight. First stage continuing to coast to Apogee, headed downrange. 
second stage engine at full power. Everything's looking good with the MVAC engine. Right now, trajectory heading us to where the Bermuda ground station can hear us. We've heard the call out, acquisition of signal. Bermuda now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 second stage. So four minutes, eight seconds into flight, everything going well on the flight of Falcon 9 with GPS-3. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And at T plus four minutes and 20 seconds, we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns. And we just passed T plus four minutes and 23 seconds, and that's actually when the first stage reaches apogee of 120 kilometers, almost 400,000 feet. At stage separation, the first stage velocity is about 2,200 meters per second, or 5,000 miles per hour. So right after stage separation, the first stage still moving at such a high velocity continues to raise its altitude as it coasts for a couple of minutes. Basically, the first stage almost doubles its altitude from stage separation, which occurred at about 69 kilometers or 226,000 feet to when it reaches apogee, and then it starts its return back to Earth. And again, apogee is the highest point or the furthest that it is away from Earth in the trajectory of the first stage. Now, the next, next major milestone that you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see on your screen, is the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight the center E9 engine, and then partway through, we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have a total of three M1D L engines helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We're just about 40 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. Today's entry burn should last about 27 seconds long. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And you heard that call out that both stages are looking good. T plus six minutes. We're about 20 seconds away from that entry burn on first stage. And it is nighttime over there on the east coast. So hard to see that first stage on the left hand screen. But once entry burn begins, it should light up that screen. We should be able to see first stage pretty well. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that entry burn starting up. Stage FTS is saved. Stage one. You could see the plume started off small and it got a little larger, and that is because we started with one single engine and added a couple engines for a total of three for this entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that concludes the entry burn. Next up, we do have a couple major milestones happening back to back. The start of the landing burn for first stage followed immediately afterwards by SECO-1 on second stage. SECO, which stands for second engine cutoff, is where we shut down the MVAC engine to allow the second stage to coast, which preserves the fuel until we need it for the final burn to take us to our targeted orbit for the GPS-3 satellite. Then about 25 awesome. seconds. OK, stage one expected. Then about 25 seconds after SECO-1, we'll hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on Of Course I Still Love You. And there's that drone ship on your left-hand screen. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Stage one transonic. Stage one transonic. Just about 20 seconds away from those two events. Again, the landing burn, followed by SECO. Seco one on second stage, just a couple seconds after that landing burn begins. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn. And Seco. There we've had Seco waiting for confirmation of good orbit as first stage returns to Earth. Stage one landing leg deploy. Nominal parking orbit. There's good orbit, and at the same time, we have touchdown of our Falcon 9 <laughs> on Of Course I Still Love You. And again, that did, that did happen at the same time, so we did have 
Seco and good orbit of our second stage. And there you could see on your left hand screen, first stage landed on, of course, I still love you. This marks the 16th Falcon 9 landing just this year and the 64th of all time. And we're looking forward to seeing this booster take its second flight on the next GPS mission next year. Now the second stage vehicle has now entered its first coast phase, which will last about 54 minutes. And we will light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after T plus one hour and three minutes. So we're going to take a quick break. And as always, we leave you with an animation so that you can keep an eye on where that second stage is throughout the coast phase. So we'll see you back here at T plus one hour and two minutes.